There's an article in Policy Mike by a guy named Zishan Alim, and he wrote about new atheism. Now, in parts, he makes good points, in my opinion, and he's uh, at times fair and objective. He has some specific quotes in there from some specific new atheists that I would agree with him uh, go too far, and they paint a bad picture. But there are other parts uh, of the article where he does something that I think a lot of progressives have been doing lately. He argues from a narrative about new atheists uh, that's a pervasive narrative in progressive circles, but I think it's largely made up. I think they're straw manning. I don't think they mean to straw man, but I think they are straw manning about new atheists. Now, for those of you who don't know, new atheism is the brand of atheism which you see from people like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Bill Maher and Christopher Hitchens and Penn Jillette and people like that. The way I describe it is atheism with a voice. Atheism, being unapologetic in your atheism and actually evangelizing about your atheism and trying to convert people and explaining to people why you think atheism makes sense. And also, a, a benchmark of new atheism is anti-theism, which is the idea that not only do we not believe in God, but we think the religions specifically are ridiculous and we think they're made up. So that's more or less what it is. Now let me go ahead and give you parts of his article, uh, certain parts that I think are unfair to new atheists, and I'll explain why. And keep in mind, this is somewhat personal to me, because I feel like the awkward kid looking at mommy and daddy fight when the progressive movement and the new atheist movement go at it with each other. And they've been doing that a lot recently. A lot, it got it kicked off with Bill Maher and Sam Harris versus Ben Affleck on real time. And it just spiraled out of control, where progressives, who I otherwise agree with on everything, are half right and half wrong on this. And athe atheists who uh, I agree on a lot of things are half right and half wrong about this. So this guy says, quote, Despite the steady decline of religiosity in the U.S., the general public is still not fond of atheists and their ways. Polls show that atheists are one of the most mistrusted groups in America, so much so that the public considers adultery less of a sin than godlessness when sizing up a presidential candidate. While there are a number of other reasons for this discomfort, one is the legacy of the influential and controversial so-called New Atheists, a band of belligerent public intellectuals including Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, and Christopher Hitchens. The trio has pushed so fervently for a venomous strain of atheism that their rise to fame has alienated many potential sympathizers. Okay, so let's pause here for a second. He made that up. Now, it is true that overall today, atheists uh, aren't very popular, but it's also true that they've never been popular, and in the past, they were less popular. So the numbers are trending more towards secularism and more towards atheism. And in fact, the trend towards atheism and secularism began when the new atheism movement began. Now, this guy's saying the exact opposite. He's like, well, people don't like atheists, and the reason why they don't, uh, the new atheists. No, new atheism came around, and then people started becoming more secular and becoming more atheistic. So you have it exactly backwards. And by the way, he presents no evidence for his side. I'm letting you know clearly there's a there was a correlation, not necessarily a causation, but a correlation between the new atheists coming around and an increase in atheism and secularism. He's just proclaiming the opposite with no evidence whatsoever. He's going, you know, people hate atheists. Why? Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris. You need to provide evidence for that. He doesn't provide evidence for that. He continues, quote, New atheists have responded to Islamist extremism by arguing that Islam itself, the faith of about one and a half billion people the world over, is a civilizational menace that must be stamped out to cure the world of its greatest source of savagery. For this mission, they have embraced advocated or favorably contemplated aggressive war, state violence, the curtailing of civil, civil liberties, torture, and genocidal preemptive nuclear strikes against Arab nations. Okay, so let's break this down piece by piece. By and large, that's not true. 
So number one, he's singling out. Oh, they think Islam's the worst force ever, and it, they're you know smearing one and a half billion of them. Well, they hate all religion, not just Islam. And what they're arguing is that it is irrational, just like Christianity is irrational. So, of course, they're against it. Of course, they're going to try to change the minds of as many people as they can. In a perfect world, they, they would change 1.5 billion minds. They're not going to do it, and they don't think they could do it. But they're arguing for their position, just like you would argue for your position. So that doesn't, it's not nefarious. This guy, you know, frames it as if it's like nefarious that, oh, they disagree with 1.5 billion people. Yeah, they also disagree with all the Christians in the world as well and the Hindus and the Buddhists and you name it. And then the second thing is, you want to talk about a smear when he says these guys advocate for aggressive war, state violence, the curtailing of civil liberties and torture. Let's get very, very specific. So Richard Dawkins, he advocated for None of those things. None of those things. Absolutely none of those things. In fact, he's on the record as being anti-war, anti-torture, pro-civil liberties. So you're smearing him along with everybody else. Now, to be fair to him, he does put a little caveat and hedges on Richard Dawkins specifically. But he lumps in Sam Harris, for example. Now, Sam Harris has also been against the entire war on terror. Now... You make a fair point when you say, well, he's kind of iffy on torture. He is. And I agree with you on that, and I disagree with the, him on that. But don't say he's for the wars because he's not for the wars. So again, you're do you are doing these broad strokes when you're thinking that he or they are doing these broad strokes. And uh, Pendulet, another new atheist, he's against the wars. So you can't say new atheists are for wars. They're, that's not true. Bill Maher is against the wars. New atheists against the wars. There are more new atheists against the war on terror and against the wars than for the wars. So when you frame it as new atheists are for aggressive war, state violence, and the curtailing of civil liberties, Bill Maher isn't for the curtailing of civil liberties. Bill Maher isn't for torture. Pendulet isn't for those things either. So you have to be specific. Now, again, on some cases, you're right, but don't smear the whole movement by saying that because then you're wrong. I mean, some would consider me a new atheist, and there's not a single person on this planet who's advocated more for civil liberties and advocated against torture and advocated against state violence and war. So you're the one doing the broad strokes. They're not the one doing the broad strokes. Uh, now, Christopher Hitchens is a specific case where he's right because Christopher Hitchens has been... Uh, he was for the war in Iraq. He's been for aggressive wars against the, the Muslim world for, I think, all the wrong reasons. He's been for... Um, uh, I don't know if he was for torture, but he's certainly for spying on Muslims. So you have a, a, some, a, a case to a certain extent with Christopher Hitchens, and I'll grant you that. And I agree with you and disagree with him on that. But you can't smear the entire movement based on... Uh, the actions of some people in the movement. And by the way, the irony of this is that he's saying that's what they're doing and he's doing it. I repeat myself. And uh, on the issue of uh, preemptive nuclear first strikes against Arab nations, yes and no. So he's talking about a passage in the end of faith uh, and Sam Harris swears up and down that that's not what he meant and other people say that is what he meant. When I read it, I think it is it, Sam is being too loose with his words and he is too quick to bring up the idea of nuclear war. But to be fair to Sam Harris, his point is, imagine Osama bin Laden got control of a country. Imagine Osama bin Laden uh, took over the Saudi Arabian government or took over a government that had nuclear weapons. Imagine we had a, a, an Islamic fundamentalist, extremist, terrorist version of Hitler running a country. That's what he's saying when he refers to nuclear war. So again, you should be specific in your criticism. And again, on that point, I kind of, I tend to agree with you more than him, but you have to be specific. Let's continue. He says, quote, While the new atheists love to argue that Islamist extremism is about Islam in its purest state, it's in fact about geopolitics. Ah, uh, here we go. Now, here is the crux of the argument and the debate between the progressive community and the atheist community on this issue. The progressive community says, no, no, it's not about religion, okay? It's about politics, it's about economics, it's about poverty, it's about oppression, it's about our foreign policy against them. And the atheists say, no, it's about religion. They're saying we want to cut people's head off, they're saying we want to do jihad, and they're doing jihad. I believe them when they tell us that. 
I'm listening to them. They're saying it's religion. It is religion. So what's the answer? They're both right. In fact, I'd say it's probably perfectly 50-50. Because they're right. They're saying, the atheists are right. They're saying it is for religion. ISIS is telling you, we are doing this for religion. We are doing this for jihad. We're trying to set up a caliphate, right? But at the same time, they probably wouldn't have been able to set up this caliphate or even get the group started if the U.S. didn't go into Iraq, break the region, debathify the government, leave weapons behind in Iraq, uh, kill innocent Muslims, which then led to further radicalization of the region, which then led to the increase of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and other jihadist groups, and then they took power. So both of them are right. And I hate it when one side screams like it's just religion and the other side screams like it's just politics. Both of you guys need to see you're both right. Uh, now, let me squeeze in uh, one or two more parts here. He says, quote, On real time, Marr and Harris cited polling results showing how many Muslims in various countries support the death penalty for apostasy or the restriction of free speech, ideas that they understandably find troubling. But they sound like many security analysts, brimming with abstract data points and lacking any discernible acquaintance with lived experience in the so-called Muslim world. A keener observer might realize that polls should be read beyond their literal results and represent a form of cultural signaling about local norms rather than immutable political beliefs. Now, on that point, I think this guy's full of shit and the new atheists are right. You're quite literally being an apologist here. You're quite literally being an apologist for shitty poll results which show an attitude in certain sectors of the Muslim community. Now, to act like they don't matter is totally disingenuous because you and I both know one of the main things I talk about on this show all the time when it comes to the attitudes of the American people and when it comes to the attitude of Christians. I talk about poll results. In fact, there was a recent poll result which found that uh, Christians were more likely to support torture than non-Christians in America when the CIA report was released. It's ironic, it's immoral, and it's wrong. And I have no problem saying, these fucking Christians are ridiculous. They're supporting torture. That's a problem in the Christian community. That's the same thing I say when it comes to apostasy, the polls on apostasy in the Muslim world. That's the same thing I say when it comes to more conservative beliefs that the Muslim world has. Understand... To defend the poll numbers in the Islamic world is very simply to defend conservatism. So if you're a liberal, if you're a progressive, and you're defending the poll numbers and doing a tap dance and saying they don't count or they don't matter for whatever reason you just fucking made up, understand, you are defending conservatism, so maybe you're not a liberal. Because the beliefs, according to the polls, in, throughout the Muslim world are very conservative. Now, it's not on me to change those beliefs. I wish I could, but they don't want to listen to me. I'm an atheist, I'm an infidel, I'm an American, yada yada. People from within the Muslim world have to reform the Muslim world and say, hey, here's a different interpretation of the Quran, and here's why we should be much more liberal than we are. Now, finally, they say, quote, steeped in paranoia about a world governed by Sharia law, the work of the new atheists emanates from a totalitarian vision of an enlightened society. I'll leave you on this. That's bullshit. That's a straw man. And this is why I've been getting more and more frustrated and angry with progressives in the debate between the progressive community and the atheist community, the new atheist community. Because you're now you're just being disingenuous. And now you're just being intellectually dishonest. Because you and I both know that Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens, Pendulet, Bill Maher, myself, and others, so-called new atheists, all they're saying is, we don't like religion, we would like to try to convince people through their own free will to go away from religion. We would like to use rational argument and talk about our belief system the same as people in Christianity and Islam talk about their belief system. But they're allowed to do it and atheists are not allowed to do it. We are shunned. We are put down. And we do believe in freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and civil liberties. And he's making it seem like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens all got together and they do believe in totalitarianism. Totalitarianism implies censorship and a restriction of freedom of speech. And 
forcibly removing religion from society. That is not what any of us believe. In fact, we're very clear. We believe in neutral governments, secular governments, not state-sanctioned atheism that pushes out all religion, like in China, for example, where they try to suppress religion. We're all for the freedom of religion. We're all for the freedom of religion, but we would like to convince you not to be religious. You have a right to practice whatever religion you want. We just want to uh, convince you otherwise. So you can practice. We believe in freedom, but they're framing it as if we don't. They're framing it like we're totalitarian and we would, we would, through violence, get rid of religion. That is not true. That's a clear misstatement of what we believe. And when you say stuff like that, you're being disingenuous. And in all seriousness, you should apologize. Or you should do a correction. Because this isn't true and you're giving people the wrong impression of new atheists as if we really are as militant as the true extremists like you'd see with Muslim fundamentalists, Christian fundamentalists, and other fundamentalists.